let's see. Yep, all good. All good. Good. Sweet. Yep. Sick. All right. So we'll kind of like go back and just kind of like recap, I guess, some of the stuff we talked about the other day. Yeah, uh, yeah. Hopefully, we don't have any uh, technical issues this time around. No, okay. I got a full charge battery today. <laughs> all right. Sick. So uh, I guess, how have you been since uh, since the other day, and how are things going? I saw you post a picture of you or video of you training with your with your son. Uh, yeah. So. Uh, man, he, he's my little work in progress, you know, um, like I said, I'm doing videos, our online class videos every day. And, uh, he's my main partner that I'm using in him. And, uh, he's actually been training jujitsu since he was three, about three and a half years old. And he's about to be 10, but man, he competes in all of our local tournaments that we do all local jujitsu tournaments. I let him do, uh, the grappling matches in the cage and, you know, he loves it. So he's my work in progress. He's my, uh, my little project. Yeah, he uh, he did a pretty good job holding the holding the holding the mitts. So, uh, pretty good. Is he uh, did, any interest in any interest in throwing hands or just jujitsu for now? Yeah, no, I mean he he can box. I got a video of him whooping me pretty good. So uh, I'll probably post that here too. He's he's got some hands on. It. He hits hard, especially for a ten year old or a nine year old. Yeah, it's uh it's good. I uh you know I wish I started young. You know it's a it's a lot harder to pick it up now. 24 than it is at a 10 or even younger like yeah. you said three uh, i guess what, what what advice would you give to parents who i guess are hesitant to put their kids in in martial arts um you know it, it's probably one of the best things you can do just just to have a sense of self-confidence to uh, know that okay my kid will never be bullied i know 100 percent he will never be bullied him or yeah. sisters my, my daughter's trained as well you know and most of uh, all the kids in my class, you know, I, I never see these kids being able to be bullied at school. Yeah. It also teaches them discipline too. And I think one of the biggest lessons is uh, like, they aren't going to be bullies either because, right. you know, they teach them respect in the gym, right? You bow after every fight or after every, every match. And I think discipline is one key thing that MMA teaches that some other sports don't. Yeah, most definitely. Um, you know, and I'm big on, discipline you know um you know all of my kids are very well disciplined all of my students in the gym are great kids i don't i don't have any bad kids in my gym you know all of them are great kids what uh, what ultimately got you into mma i was i was reading a little bit about your uh, your past and, and you wanted to be a boxer is that is that correct yeah when i was probably about my son's age when i was nine or ten years old that's back when tyson was uh you know, real big, and, you know, they had the Tyson and the Holyfield boxing matches, and I was really into that. And I, I remember saying, telling a guy one day, you know, I want to be a boxer, and he was like, oh, well, good, let me be your manager. And, you know, it's just at that time, when you're 10 years old, you're just laughing it off and just, you know, just really talking. And then sort of became a reality, you know. I, I started training jiu-jitsu when I was about 20 years old, and, you know, doing mixed martial arts as well, boxing and kickboxing. And I knew I wanted to fight in a cage. And I got that first cage fight. And, you know, I went from there. My fourth amateur fight, I remember my coach saying, can't wait to see you in the UFC one day. And I'm thinking, you know, that's only, I'm still watching this on TV. That's only a dream. You know, I'm fighting amateur. But, and next thing you know, a couple of years later, there we are. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you had a, a wild journey, I think is the best way to put it. Eight no's, nine and no to start your career. Fought Pat Healy uh, in Strike Force, which a lot of people forget about Pat Healy, but he was he was one of the best lightweights in the world at, at, at one point. He was a stud in his day, man. You know, and anybody that's watched that fight, if I would just fall like I know I could, um, I think I could have won that fight. Yeah, yeah. Your only losses, like like we said the other day, have really been to to killers like UFC fighters, former UFC fighters, strike force champions, uh, Andre Harrison too. But like, you know, they've only been uh, top notch guys, and those have pretty much. But like outside the UFC, you've beaten top notch guys too, like Cedeno and Des Green. Um, so we we talked a little bit about what what is next. You said you were staying ready. Um, what what is it you want? What what are you looking for? 
Um, well, of course, I would love to go back to the UFC. I would love to get one of these late notice calls um, to go fight on that island. You know, I know they got that here at Island, I think, off the coast of San Francisco or something like that, or California. And, um, you know, that would be fun. But I'm just open to anything, man. It's right now, it's been almost right out of year. I think I fought May last year when I fought in uh, Brazil. And, you know, it's like, when you ain't fought in a year, you get really hungry and you want to fight. So we'll see what happens with, with all the Corona stuff going around. Uh, you know, I, I do think the UFC will be the first sport back and I'm sure other organizations will follow right behind, even if it's a, you know, a, a low capacity crowd or empty, no crowd, empty stadium or arena. Um, you know, I think there's going to be some phone calls being made and, Hopefully, I'll jump on one of the calls. Are you open to competing in organizations abroad? Like, for example, Brave or One? Um, or are you looking primarily to stay, you know, in the United States? Um, right now, I would like to stay in the United States. But, I mean, it, it all depends. Um, it all depends on what they call, what they offer, where it's at. And, uh, you know, I'll get with my management, Sucker Punch, you know, Brian and those guys. And we'll figure it out. You know, I like to leave everything in their hands. You know, it's a reason that, you know, that's the reason I got a manager and I love those guys and they've taken me, they taken care of me since day one. So, um, you know, if they call and say, Hey, I, and I've never turned a fight down either. Every time they call and say, Hey, you want to fight? I say, I'll take it. Uh, whether it got gets worked out or not, you know, um, I, I've never turned down a fight. So they know. And Brian already knows when he calls me and asks me, he already knows the answer. He just says, I just need to hear it. So we'll see. We'll see if they call for something. Yeah. Have, have you ever had any like knacking injuries or anything like that? Anything lingering here? Or are you 100% good to go if the call comes? Uh, you know, I had a little injury a little while back. And I think it was just something like a nerve in my shoulder or in my back. Uh, and I always get those quite often, especially when I'm cutting a lot of weight. You know, uh, I seem to always, always pull the muscles in my shoulders and my neck or something like that. And just recently, it was pretty bad. I fought through it. Um, I took a couple weeks off training, and now with the quarantine and stuff like that, I'm actually just getting back into, uh, you know, everything feeling normal with my shoulder. So it's been pretty well. Um, I'm feeling good. You know, I'm training here and there, you know, when I can at my house. Um, hopefully, by the 1st of May, they let us open the gyms back up, you know, and we get back in and, you know, get things rolling again. Again. We uh, we talked about the uh, your weight class the other day as well. We we kind of talked a little bit about uh, how you can fluctuate either between forty five and fifty five. UFC expressed interest if you were to be a forty fiver. Um, I always thought cardio was the one thing that you had uh, as an advantage over a lot of your opponents. Um, is what is the move? Do you think? I know you talked a little bit about fifty five. Um, where where would you like to see yourself? Um, you know, it depends on where it is. And uh, one thing my manager, Brian, has mentioned to me, maybe doing a couple catch weights at 150 until we get back into the UFC or get a couple wins racked up, see if Sean and the UFC want to take me back. Um, and I think 150 might be, you know, that weight class that I might would do the best at if that was a weight class. You know, everybody's got that certain weight that they feel awesome at. And uh, 45 is almost like it's a little too much for me to cut, but it's doable. And, you know, for the UFC or maybe for Bellator or PFL, that tournament, I would most definitely jump on and do it. But I've always felt comfortable at 55, and 55 isn't the struggle of a cut um, mentally and physically that 45 is. But I'm walking around right now. During the quarantine, you know, not on no strict diet, you know, cooking every night and eating good. And I'm walking around 172, 173. So I'm right there in the middle where I yeah. feel like I can do either one. Yeah, that's pretty – like you think of guys like um, Kevin Lee who are huge, right? Those guys can get up to 200 uh, and they fight at one – he can make 155. Um, right. So that's where like that size thing, it's I – think, I think, you know, a lot of people are – aren't a fan of too many weight classes because there's a lot of champions um, like boxing, but I do like the idea of having them at least every five pounds because 
it almost puts you in a disadvantage, right? Like if you go into a fight against a 55er who actually is 200 pounds, um, it puts you at a huge disadvantage. Yeah. And yeah, that's true. And, you know, if I was going to fight at 155, you know, it would probably all depend on the matchup too. You know, I wouldn't want to jump in and fight a guy that cuts from 200 pounds to 155. And then the next day or fight night, you know, I'm back at 170, 175 and, you know, him 190, you know, because when I cut down to 145, I'm tipping 170, every bit of 170 when I get back in the ring the next night. So, you know, I put a lot of weight back on and I typically I'll do about the same. Even if I cut to 55 or 45, I'm still between 70 and 75 on fight night. As a as a fan, it almost blows my mind that people can put that much weight on overnight. What what is it? Is it just constantly eating, constantly drinking? Well, I mean, you got to be careful with it because you will hurt your body and you'll feel like crap. You know, um, mainly it's, it's the hydration because whenever you cut weight, most fighters they don't just walk into the sauna and cut two pounds. You know, a lot of fighters are you know maybe fifteen pounds over on. Um, you know, the day of weigh-in, and they cut that 15 to 10 pounds in the sauna, cut all the water weight out, and then you can get out and drink a gallon of water, and that's just going to put you eight pounds instantly right back on. So, you you know, you're probably going to drink two gallons of water, eat two meals, three meals, and right there you're probably looking at 15 to 18 pounds. It's crazy to think about that. It's, it just doesn't seem like from someone who doesn't cut weight, it just seems super unhealthy. But uh, obviously, everyone's doing it, and uh, there's not there hasn't been that many cases of serious injuries. But uh, it's just from someone who doesn't have to cut weight, it sounds crazy. Yeah, it's not the <laughs> most healthy thing to do to your body, but you know, it's it's part of the sport, and you know, it's what we do. Yeah, is there a uh, this is a question I've always wondered because because you've obviously fought in UFC. What is it now? Four times, um, five times, uh, five times, I believe. Yeah, five times. Um, has there ever been a fighter where you met and you're like, oh my god, it's like George St. Pierre? Like, have you ever been starstruck by a, another UFC fighter? Um, I will say, lately, no. But whenever I fought Strike Force and I showed up to Oklahoma, um, and got out the car to walk into the hotel. The first guy I seen was Jacare. And I'm like, oh shit, there's Jacare. You know? And, you know, I was a little starstruck there. And then you got DC walking around. You know, that was a huge card that has a lot of uh, you know, legends and future legends on it. So that was a great card to be a part of. And for that being my first big event, um, you know, UFC level, uh, I was pretty starstruck with a lot of those guys. But after that you know, I'm like, you know, I'm one of these guys too. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's just, it's, yeah, there's, there's a lot of, fi- I met the first time I met a UFC fighter was TJ Grant. Uh, Cause he, we're both from Halifax uh, and I met him. He actually came to work at a facility I was working at. He came to the, the hot tub and I walked in, I'm like, are you TJ Grant? And uh, yeah, he was like, yeah. And I ended up going to his gym to train there simply because of that conversation. Um, so it's funny how like just, an in, a meeting like that can uh, can inspire someone to go out and get involved in the sport. But uh, TJ was the first, uh, and then I met Anthony Smith, and same sort of thing. Starstruck. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, Another but, yeah. had a final strike for us that not a lot of people realize. I think uh, yeah. Anthony Smith fought Hoydra Gracie on yeah. that car. So, you know, um, I was starstruck by a lot of those guys that night. Yeah. What uh, what are your predictions for, for, for 250 that may or may not happen, location to be announced potentially? Uh, there's a lot of questions surrounding it to begin with, um, but uh, we'll stick with uh, the main event, I guess, the p- rumored main event, Tony Ferguson, who made weight today, even though he didn't have to fight, uh, which is crazy to think about. But if anyone's going to do it, it's Tony and Justin Gaethje. Who would you have in that fight? Man, I'm going to take Justin Gaethje. I've always been a fan of Justin Gaethje, even from his days back in World Series. You know, I've always thought he was a monster. And I remember when I used to want to fight Justin Gaethje. And, you know, as I've gotten older and, you know, years later, I'm like, 
thank God I didn't fight that dude back when I wanted to. He would have probably killed me. But uh, I think, you know, he's one of the toughest guys in the sport. And I love the way he approaches a fight. The dude, he just don't, he doesn't care. He doesn't care if he gets tired. He doesn't care if he gets hit. You know, um, of course he cares if he wins or loses, but he goes out there and he puts it all on the line. And uh, I think his kicks is going to be the factor. His kicks and his wrestling is going to be the factor that's going to play out in the fight with him and Ferguson. So I'm going to take I'm going to take Gaethje. Yeah, it's uh, it's funny because I have I have it the same way for almost the exact same reason. It's just who knows what Gaethje's going to do, right? If he chooses to throw his wrestling out the window, it could be anybody's fight. I don't think he's going to use his wrestling, but I think he'll use his wrestling. <laughs> He's to stop Tony's takedowns because Tony will shoot. Tony will try to, uh, you know, engage in the clinch and, uh, you know, use some trip takedowns and stuff like that. And I think that's where Gaethje's going to use his wrestling. Um, because you can go back. Tony's been in trouble in a lot of fights. He's just. Cartwheels his way out of it. He's not going to quit. That's the thing. And I've seen guys like uh, Tony. They just don't have a mentality that their brain doesn't register stop or register stop when they get hurt. It doesn't register quit when he gets hurt. He just he's gonna keep going and going. So the only way to beat him is to take him out because you're you're never gonna break him. But I think uh, you know after a bunch of leg kicks and he can't walk or can't put pressure on the leg, you know I think uh, I think um, Gagey takes it. Yeah, it's good good prediction and good good analysis there. Uh, I have it the the exact same way. If there's if there's a fight uh, for someone who's not necessarily familiar with your fighting, if there's one fight that you're like you got to watch that one, that'll give you an idea of who I am as a fighter. Which fight would it be? Oh, that's tough. Um, I don't know. That that's a tough one. Um. I mean, I would love to say Justin Gaethje, but, you know, I don't get hit as much as him. So I'll fight the same way. I'll fight going forward, but I don't take that, that amount of damage. So that, that's a tough one. Is there, is there a fight in your career where you're like, that's the best fight of my career? Uh, yeah, Jay-Z Cavacanti. I feel like that fight right there, I felt like there was never a time when I got tired. There was never a time I felt in danger, um, you know, him and your Dennis Daniel, you know, back to back, I felt like nobody could have beat me that night. Yep. So, um, and last, last question, non MMA. Um, what are you, what are you watching? What's on TV? Are you, what are you doing to occupy yourself? Obviously you've got kids running around, but other than that, what are you watching? Well, where I live at, we don't have the best service. I have satellite internet and lately for the last month, I hadn't even been able to finish a Netflix film. Uh, but, you know, I like to just surf Netflix and find a good series to, uh, to watch. Uh, I've started watching Ozark um, a couple months ago. There, I, I got them to the second season. I hadn't got to finish yet. I hadn't got to watch Tiger King. But there's been um, series on Netflix like Shooter. I just watched that not long ago. Um, the Punisher is one of my favorite series on Netflix. And, uh, you know, any, anything to do with fighting or the UFC, I watch a lot of uh, the access fights and, um, you know, fight pass fights and stuff like that. All right. Well, uh, thank you very much for, uh, for jumping on, man. I appreciate you taking the time to, to talk to me. And uh, um, all the best. Hopefully you get a call soon. I'm looking forward to seeing you fight again. Yeah, uh, definitely appreciate it. Thanks for having me on anytime. Yeah. So uh, two-time, uh, two-time Titan FC champion, uh, Kurt Hollibaugh, everybody. Thanks. Appreciate it.